Your, your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, well, we're something of an outlier here, really. We're here to talk about oil and gas, not mining and resources. Um, and it's also fair to say that uh, the parent company is out of New Zealand and not out of Australia. But we think this conference is highly relevant to what we do. We're in the resources area. Oil and gas is definitely part of the resources industry, and we're certainly aiming to be mining as much oil and gas as we possibly can in Chile. And Australia is New Zealand's nearest neighbour, um, and it's a, a very active uh, international resource investor. So if there's any place that we should be talking to people, it's here in Australia and here talking to resource investors. Um, presentation today um, is going to cover six broad heads. Firstly, I'm going to give you a, an introduction into Petra Magallanes, a cor corporate overview. Then I'm going to talk about uh, why Petra Magallanes has uh, chosen to invest into Chile. I'm going to talk about the, the blocks that Petra Magallanes holds in Chile. Um, it's got four blocks. They're all operated by Petra Magallanes. Um, three of them are held 100% and um, one is held 50% uh, with ENAP, the Chilean National Oil Company. I want to talk then about the uh, operational capabilities of Petra Magallanes the strategic objectives of the company, and finally, just to say a very brief word about uh, the nature of the investment opportunity. Uh, Petro Magallanes was incorporated by Greymouth Petroleum. Greymouth Petroleum is a private New Zealand oil and gas explorer and producer. It produces large quantities of gas and oil in New Zealand. Um, and it saw this uh, opportunity to invest into Chile as a way of its expanding its activities. Um, the directors of the company are Mr. Mark Dunphy, who's here today, Mr. Peter Masfin, and John Sturgis. The management of the company is concentrated in the subsurface by Dr. Robert Brady, and he was meant to be speaking here today, and unfortunately you've got the off-course substitute in me, but um, uh, here you are. And the in-country manager is Alberto Harambor, um, uh, and he's based in Punta Arenas. And the head office of the organisation is in Punta Arenas, and that's the um, uh, city uh, on the Straits of Magellan, um, right opposite Tierra del Fuego in the southern part of Chile. Why did Petro Magallanes be incorporated and invest in Chile? The initiative came from an invitation from one of Greymouth Petroleum's major gas customers who said you should look at uh, investing in Chile, and one thing led to another. Once Chile was examined, and you've seen some of the indices um, from the fine speakers we heard earlier this morning, but we have in Chile a, a country that is politically stable. The rule of law prevails. Um, it's got very good regulatory quality. It's got high economic freedom rankings. Foreign direct investment is welcomed. But more than anything else, if you're an oil and gas company, what really matters is, is there oil and gas to be found? There's an old adage in uh, the oil and gas industry, and that is, look for oil where oil is. And there is oil and gas in the Tierra del Fuego region, and has been for a long time. The first discoveries were made in that area in 1949. Maximum domestic production was reached in 1982, when the fields in the um, offshore area of the Straits of Magellan were fully developed. ENAP, that's the Chilean National Oil Company, commenced an aggressive international expansion campaign between 1996 and 2003, and the result of that has been relatively mild ongoing efforts in exploration within, within Chile. In 1999, and as you can see from this, let's see, not, as you can see from that graph, they had a very optimistic outlook for what they thought would be increased oil and gas production as a result of a renewed exploration initiative. The reality, however, was different. And as you can see, there has been a long decline. That graph goes to 2009. Um, in 2010, average daily production is now less than 10,000 barrels a day. So 
and that's against annual demand, sorry, daily demand in uh, Chile of 310,000 barrels a day. So there's an extreme shortage of liquid hydrocarbons in Chile. They are importing virtually all of their oil. The position is more or less the same in gas. Chile is compelled to import very large quantities of gas and is doing so through LNG terminals which have recently been constructed. So why Chile? There's a very good regulatory and fiscal regime. And on the fiscal regime, 17% income tax, total tax of 35% on profits repatriated, and a royalty regime that is not dissimilar to what we're used to in Australia and New Zealand, that's attractive. There's an established oil and gas industry, uh, infrastructure, there are proven producing basins. The subsurface geology is quite well understood. There's a severe shortage of hydrocarbons and heavy import dependency, which means that there are very clear pathways for rapid commercialisation of any discovery. But most importantly, from Petro Magallanes' point of view, it's acquired highly prospective blocks, and it's acquired them on what it regards as very good terms. Let's talk just a little bit about past exploration in Chile. This is the, an area showing um, part of the Magallanes Basin in uh, Tierra del Fuego. And if I um, just point out, that's Tierra del Fuego. Ooh, where is it? What? It won't show. It's, it won't show? OK. Well, Tierra del Fuego is um, uh, in the area to the right, and um, you can see the Straits of Magellan within there. And you can see that exploration is absolutely concentrated in the northwest area. In the southwest, um, uh, in the southwest, that's been relatively underexplored, and one, in fact, one could say virtually unexplored. There are numerous old, untested potential gas discoveries in this area. So, it's regionally attractive. I then want to turn to how did Petra Magallanes get its permits. In 2007, the, uh, the Chilean government uh, established a bidding round seeking, um, seeking bids from uh, international participants for its exploration acreage. This was their first formal bidding round after mostly failed efforts to attract direct investment with an open country policy. They offered 10 blocks comprising some 32,000 square kilometres. All the blocks were, were within the Magallanes Basin, a known producing province. The outcome of that process was the award to Petro Magallanes of four blocks uh, comprising about 10,000 square kilometres two of them in the offshore area of the Straits of Magellan, and two uh, onshore in Tierra del Fuego. Um, and if you see the, the blocks, in that, the Petro Magallanes blocks are the ones in green, and, and in the uh, northwest, the bigger of the two blocks onshore, that is held 50-50 with ENAP. Uh, Petro Magallanes has made a work commitment of near enough to 100 million US dollars over the whole of the seven year exploration period. And so far, since it was a, has been awarded these permits, it's expended some 35 million US dollars. Petro Magallanes is an operating company. And what I mean by that is that Petro Magallanes has no fears about doing the work on the ground, uh, organising the seismic crews, organising the drilling rigs, organising and conducting the testing of wells, etc. It is an operator, it's what it does in New Zealand, and it's doing that in, uh, in Chile. And this is a, has been a tremendous advantage, especially in a remote location such as Tierra del Fuego. Because Petro Magallanes is an operator, it has access to rigs, it has access to seismic equipment, and that's been a very big plus and has enabled it to do things that others might not have been able to do. It is currently involved in the conduct of seismic acquisition. It's going on as we speak. Uh, it has re-entered a number of wells. It has successfully tested um, and established the flow of hydrocarbons from those re-entered wells. And it's planning 3D and 2D seismic programs in 2012 
and the drilling of more wells. It's active and it's going to continue to be active. And all of this is run by a very experienced exploration and operations team. I'm not going to talk too much about this slide because, as you've heard from my background, subsurface geology is not exactly my forte. But the real point I want to make here is that in the Porvenir block, which is just one of, our, uh, uh, one of the blocks that Petra Magallanes holds, there are uh, thrusted anticlines that appear to be continuous along the coast. They look like they are very substantial bumps. We know the area is prolific for hydrocarbons. We know there's oil in the area. We know there's good reservoir. So uh, it would be fair to say that Petra Magallanes has high hopes for its exploration efforts in this area. So what are the objectives? And the first point I want to say is that we've got some uh, comment in here about volumetrics. There are no proven reserves. These are only potential or contingent resources. Nevertheless, the first objective is to have material exploration success by drilling wells targeting major plays. Some of these plays have not been tested before. Some of them have been. Um, within the Porvenir block, we think there's the possibility of the oil originally in place from the targets we're looking at of some 240 million barrels. Uh, oil, uh, a gas initially in place, something like half a TCF. In the Figuino area, which is in the Carpolican block, we can also see the potential for oil originally in place of some 200 million barrels. Those are numbers that are pretty encouraging for any would-be explorer, certainly in the onshore area. And I might add that those kind of gas discoveries, there is an absolutely ready commercialisation path. There are gas consumers right there in the area. The second objective is to develop uh, its existing discoveries, um, the wells that I mentioned earlier that have been re-entered, the Clarencia well, um, it's got potential for some 440 billion cubic feet. In Brochula there's potential for some 400 billion cubic feet and some 4 million barrels of liquids. So developing what we've already got is the second objective. And the third objective is to achieve world-class exploration production exploration and production scale through its Chilean operations. And the, the slide there mentions uh, peers. There are other companies that are active in this area and uh, the activities of Petra Magallanes are certainly comparable to the level of activities of those other companies. That includes Apache Corporation, Pan American, Geopark, YPF or Repsol and Winterschall out of, out of Germany. So, the investment opportunity. I'm not going to dwell on this, but simply to say that uh, Petro Magallanes is interested in hearing of expressions of interest from people who would like to be a co-investor in respect of its activities in Chile. We believe there is material upside in the development and discovery phases, and that lies ahead. There are clear pathways to commercialisation. They're fully supported by the, by the policy makers. There is a very clear political uh, and economic need for the development of hydrocarbons. All in all, it's a pretty exciting opportunity. Thank you.